here's a little intro to using Green's theorem to calculate the area uh, with enclosed within a curve, which is at first seems like a very weird idea. I have some curve, like a circle. That would be a little bit too easy because we know the area inside that. Or maybe like some sort of polygon might be more complicated. And the goal is simply to calculate the area inside it. What could be easier, right? Well, it couldn't, it might not be that easy if the description of your curve is more about the curve itself than about what it's bounding. And so, for example, a polygon described by its vertices, that actually is fairly hard um, to just, you know, sit down and calculate the area enclosed by that if you just know the vertices. And that's one example in your homework is to think about that. Another example would be if this is like a uh, parametrized curve, that actually can be rather hard. And I'll t sh show you an example in a, in a minute. The idea, though, is just really, it's really wonderful but weird. It's uh, physically speaking, you make your curve out of wire uh, or like a tube, and um, then you set up a big tank of water, a big flat uh, table with water on it, and you set it spinning in the pinwheel pattern. That's the minus y, i plus xj pattern. And then you put the tube in, and you measure the circulation of the fluid through the tube. And by Green's theorem, because the scalar curl of this guy is the constant equal to 2, that will be the ratio between your area, which you want to know, and the circulation. And so the it, it, you were assuming we don't know easily calculate this, but somehow we can easily calculate the 26.3, divide it by 2, and to get the 13.15. It's a very strange idea. And so here's how it works in practice. Oh, one other thing. This isn't the only way to do it. Instead of calculating the circulation of this particular thing, the pinwheel vector field dividing by 2, we could, if, and sometimes it's simpler, just do minus y, the a shearing vector field. That guy has a nice ratio just equal to 1. There, if you calculate the circulation, you have nailed the area. Again, you have to do it in the, the right way. For this particular vector field, it's curling uh, counterclockwise, and so you want to integrate counterclockwise. You could also set up the xj vector field, which just shears in a somewhat different way, but it still has ratio equal to 1. So how does that work, practically speaking? It says, let's say for the pinwheel vector field, let me blow this up a little bit. For the pinwheel vector field, Green's theorem says, if you have a region, and if I integrate a closed curve integral around the boundary of that region, the pinwheel vector field, and then uh, that's going to be, Green's theorem says, that's equal to the integral of the scalar curl of that guy. I've put in a 1 half, so that when I get the scalar curl equal to 2, it's going to cancel out and be 1. Here, I've written down the differential form notation for that, which is often easier to just kind of convert into an explicit uh, parameterized integral. Um, always, if you have xi plus y, or xi, sorry, it's minus yi plus xj, the minus yi turns into the thing in front of the dx, and the x, which was in front of the j, turns into the dy. So with the one-halves to make the two cancel out in the scalar curl, I get this wonderful formula. The area is this funky-looking vector line integral over the curve that bounds the region. And similar versions are in the book for the, the shearing vector fields that aren't pinwheels. But this one actually, even though it looks more complicated than the other two in the book, sometimes it's, it's prettier. For example, with this example, I'm going to do part of this. I don't want to do the whole thing. It's very close to one in the book. Um, and I, don't, I think I want to save it. Um, this is a very funky curve, an epicycloid. It's got some funky cosines and sines. What it does is it takes a circle. Uh, it's a little bit distorted, but basically there's a circle in, hiding in here where these cusps are, and it's what happens if you roll a wheel around the edge of a circle. And I think it's all distorted because it's a little bit elliptical in this picture. Um, let me see if I can make it prettier. Uh, equal scaling. There we go. Now it kind of looks like I took a circle in the middle here, and then I rolled a wheel and put some sort of marker on the, the, the edge of the wheel as I go around. Now I want to find the area inside that. And here's a classic case where I've got a not too ridiculously complicated description of the curve itself, but how would I calculate the area? Well, what, I pull out a double integral, but well, from what to what? I don't have y as a function of x or x as a function of y here. That's the key thing. I have them at both as functions of t, which is wonderful for drawing the curve. It's wonderful for integrating along the curve, hint, hint. But it's not nice for figuring out like dy dx limits for an integral inside the curve. So this is a great place to use this technique. And so the area is going to be 1 half the pinwheel integral. So 1 half, and then I just trot it out. OK, let's see if I can put these on the, let me uh, delete this for a second. OK, so here's x. dy, of course, is just dy dt 
with a dt put in at the end. Okay, And so this is just, I take the derivative of this guy, put it in, and then minus y, which is this guy again, but undifferentiated, dx, pl plug that guy in here. That's not a super nice looking integral, but it's just, it's just trig functions. And in fact, if you're good with cosine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, and also with things like addition and subtraction formulas, turns out that this simplifies wonderfully, and the integral you get is trivial if you do it completely correctly. Um, if not, then you might have to, I don't know, do something like parts or something like that. But if you're really watching out for trig identities, it's actually really easy um, at the end. And you get a very simple answer. You get 42 pi. And I don't know how the heck I would try to do this with another method. With that funky curve and try to do D, you know, an ordinary integral, Green's term is a very powerful method for this example. And you have a few other examples where uh, it gives you cool results as well.